Hey everyone, it's Lindsay from Minecrafty Plans. Welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, oh, welcome. Today it's December 24th, and I am participating in the 25 Days of Planner Tips collaboration. I am so excited for this. The 25 Days of Planner Tips is brought to you by Tamara of the Paper and Pen Girl. This is actually the fifth year that this collaboration has been going on. I'm so honored to be a part of it. This is my first year participating in the collaboration. I've been enjoying all of the videos so, so much. If you haven't already seen them, definitely check them out. I've got the whole playlist linked down in the description below. You can check them all out. If you're coming over from Amber's video yesterday or from one of the other collaboration videos, hi, welcome. I hope you stick around. I make tons of planner content throughout the year and I'm actually just about to wrap up Planmas. So I've had a new video up on my YouTube channel every day in the month of December so far, and I've got one more coming tomorrow. I've also got a playlist of that linked down in the description below if you want to check any of that out. It's got a couple of vlogs, a lot of plan with me's, my planner lineup, so much fun stuff going on there. So definitely check that out. So on to the collab. The theme for this year's collaboration, which every year has a different theme, this year the theme is planner accomplishments. And as soon as Tamara told me the theme, I knew exactly what I wanted wanted to share with all of you. So today I will be talking about what I feel is definitely my biggest accomplishment of this year and how my planners helped me achieve this and that is how I brought the fun back into my life and back into my family's life. I've also got a giveaway going on here in this video so you can enter the all of the information to enter is down in the description below and I will also share it at the end of the video as well as going over what I've got going on but I will let you know on the theme of organizing family fun I will be giving away a 2023 Erin Codron Family Organizer Planner. I'm going to be using this planner for next year and I'm really excited for one of you to be winning this planner as well. Again, I'll give more information on that in both the description of this video and at the end of the video as well. But for now, I actually want to get into the why, why this matters so much to me, why fun matters uh, before I jump into the how. So before we jump into the how I use my planners to achieve this, I want to jump into the why and I want to share some of my own story, even if the details don't line up with your life exactly, I have a feeling that some of this is going to resonate with a lot of people. Fun just gets a really bad rap. People see it as an indulgence, as something that you don't need to focus on, as something that doesn't need to be planned out or written down in your goals or really even paid attention to at all. It's seen as less than being productive, as less than other areas in your life, and that is just absolutely and categorically untrue. Life should be enjoyed. We should be having fun. Fun is essential, it is valuable, and it is worthy just the same as any other area in your life. I'm gonna take you back with me now to 2019 and share a little bit of my story in the hopes that it might resonate with some of you and also just explain why I decided to choose fun this year. So. Back in 2019, we were living in Texas, super far away from where both my husband and I had grown up, from our extended family, from our friends, from our community, and we had two small children, and I was pregnant with my third. I felt so isolated and alone. We had no real community there. We hadn't been there for very long. And I just spent most of my time with the two littles and I just didn't really have a good strong support network. We weren't going out and doing tons of things. And like a lot of parents of young kids, I just felt really disconnected from my life and from myself. And on top of that, I was pregnant with baby number three. My husband and I decided that the best thing for our family would be if we could move back to Pennsylvania, which is where we were both from, where our friends were, where our family was, where we had more of a support network, especially in anticipation of having another baby. So we did make that happen and right at the end of of 2019 we moved back here and a couple months later at the end of February in 2020 we welcomed our third child. Can you guess where this is going? It was not even two weeks after we were home from the hospital with baby number three that I sat in my bed nursing her to sleep talking to my husband and saying gee this virus looks really bad. Do you think things are gonna close here? Well, we all know what happened next. So as we emerged from the chaos of the lockdowns, I felt like I was just so caught up in the day to day of having three small children, of getting back into the world, that I just don't think I was enjoying anything. We weren't enjoying anything and life had just really gotten to be no fun at all. And we weren't taking advantage of the whole reason that we moved home in the first place, which was to be a part of our 
community, to be back with our family, with our friends, to be out there doing things, to have people that we knew. That was seriously the whole reason we moved home and it was basically just put on pause for more than a year. So after some serious reflection at the end of 2021, I decided that 2022 was gonna be the year of fun and that was gonna be my focus. Seriously, my word, my word of the year for this year is play. I'll show you more of that planner in a minute. That's my Moxie Life goal planner and that is a huge driver of the success of this year. With all of that focus on fun and on play, I will tell you that this has been the best year of my life since becoming a parent. Seriously, this year has been incredible and it's also been a really productive year but also just super, super enjoyable and really that's what it's all about. So all of this is just to say that fun matters. It absolutely matters. So I'm going to flip you tabletop and I'm going to show you some of the ways that I've used my planners to plan for fun and to bring fun back into our lives. So I am just going to jump right in and show you how this works in my planning system. First up, we have what I like to think of as the foundation of my planning system, and that is my Moxie Life goal planner. I absolutely love Moxie Life. This was my first year on the system, and I am just in the process of starting year two. I just finished my annual goals for this year, and I do use the quarterly companion notebooks. These are meant to be paired with any planner that you already have and love, which is perfect for me because I have and love a lot of planners. So you get one per each quarter and then an annual goals work notebook. I have a ton of videos on this if you want to know more about Moxie Life. But what I did want to show you in here that first of all, that page that I showed you at the beginning, this was just my little like sticker mind map vision board for the year that I just had a lot of fun with at the end of last year while I was setting it up. And while I was thinking about my word of the year, which was play, I had picked that through the Moxie Life pro goal setting process. It's in my intentions for the year. And what I wrote at the beginning or at the end of last year is I want to press play on life, unpause the many things that were put on hold and invite more fun activity and adventure into our days and lives. So step one for inviting more fun into your life and using your planners to get you there is you have to make the decision to make it happen. Nothing happens if you don't work for it and you have to work for fun the same way that you work for anything else. So Maxi Life is a system where you set goals according to life areas and one of the life areas is actually fun and recreation. This was one of my main stretch goals for the year. On this side, I also had some family vacation goals and some other vacation goals. This is really the goal of where it's at, where it happened. This is the magic. I said every week schedule something, activities, play dates, excursions, experiences, crafts. It doesn't matter what it is. We should always try and have something to do on the weekends. Obviously, from time to time, plans get canceled. Kids get sick. We're not able to make it happen. But for the most part, we were able to make it happen. And I really focused on this a lot. It's been a complete mind shift. This is very much now a routine. So that was my annual goal. Then pretty much these are the quarterly companion notebooks where you put your monthly goals. For example, here are my September goals. And you can see in the fun and recreation categories, I had my schedule plans and activities for every weekend. And then I also had some specific activities in mind because it was fall. And if you turn to literally any one of my months in here, I'm going to have something about plans, about weekend plans in my monthly goals. So here I had beach or weekend plans and we had a week off between school and camp. So I also wanted to make plans for that. That's literally in every single one of my monthly goals. And then each week I put it on my weekly action items to create weekend plans. That's the way that this system works. You set annual goals, you break it down into monthly goals, you break it down into weekly goals. And literally almost every week of the year, unless I already knew what I was doing that weekend, weekend plans was on my goals for the week. Sometimes if I knew what we were doing, I would even just put it in. Like this week we were going to the beach. So I just put beach fun directly in there is so important because then it is literally in your goals every single week. It's in your weekly action items every single week. And then it ends up on my weekly sidebar on my weekly task list. So this is my decorative functional planner as I like to think of it. I do not use this every week. Sometimes I do a much more functional approach. But when I feel like stickering, this is the way I create a weekly overview spread. Almost always having weekend plans, making weekend plans ends up in my weekly to-do list. I also typically book in some point on either Wednesday or Thursday, something I like to call a calendar session. This is when I handle a bunch of admin tasks all at once, including making weekend plans. So if we don't already have plans for the weekend, look at our schedule. I will text our friends. I will book tickets to the zoo or the museum or whatever it is we're doing. And I will make those plans. I will check in with like our cousins, with my family, with my husband's family, and just see what's going on and make the plans. That way we don't have to worry about it Saturday morning. It's already in the books. 
that shift has been just tremendously helpful. You can see right here on this weekend that we went to the zoo and then actually left my big kids, my two older ones, with my mother-in-law. And then on Sunday, we had soccer. So just always having something to do. Regular activities that you schedule and sign up for also really helps with this. But you don't necessarily need them. We were just out there looking for things to do. This was a beach weekend. So I still, you know, was looking for things to check in with there on Thursday. And then this weekend, we went to the beach. I will also oftentimes add this into my day daily planner. You can see right here on the Wednesday, I was looking to make weekend plans. And then actually, if I flip over to Saturday, we can see that we went to a Halloween event at the zoo. So it's just a really, really putting it in the front of your mind, adding it to your to-do list, adding it to your schedule, getting it on the calendar, making it all happen, coordinating with the various people you need to coordinate with. So for me, that is my husband, but also my family, my husband's family. We've got a lot of cousins in the area and we like to see them a lot. So that is a really another fun option for weekend funds. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Sometimes it's just like, hey, we're going to try a new playground. Speaking of which, this is my year-end reflections notebook. This is also from Moxie Life, and this was a page that was in here to do your highlights of the year, and I decided to focus on my word of the year play, and I made a little highlight reel of some of the things that we did. So I will share them with you because I just think it hammers home how hard I worked to have fun plans all of the time and to actually follow through and do them. And like I said, we've just had the most fun this year. So we had 11 beach weekends. We went to the museum eight times. Most of that was the children's museum. My kids are six and under. We had four days at the zoo, two days at, an arc at, at different arcades, one day at an amusement park. We took a family vacation to Jamaica. We went to at least 10 different playgrounds. I had a hard time counting them all up. We also purchased a swing set for our backyard, which is a great way to have fun at home and countless playdates, parties, barbecues, family get-togethers, craft projects, trips to the shopping mall, which we all love to do, even the kids, and just literally just so much fun. So again, there's basically three easy steps to this. One, decide that it is a priority. Two, put it in your planner that you want it to happen. Keep putting it in your planner. Keep making it happen. Keep it in the front of your mind. Schedule those activities. Schedule those outings. Even if it's something that doesn't feel like it needs to be scheduled, like a trip to the playground, schedule it anyways. That way it's more likely to happen. You're more likely to have the fun. And once you keep doing it and keep scheduling it, it will really feel like a routine. And for us, it feels like a lifestyle change as well. And that is just so beautiful and so powerful and I'm so glad that my planners have helped me accomplish this. Before I throw this back to the face front, to wrap this up, I wanna just share the Erin Codron family organizer that I'm going to be giving away in this video. I will keep this giveaway open through the end of the year, so through December 31st, and I will choose a winner just right at the beginning of the new year, and I will get this mailed out to you super, super quickly so that you can dive right in. This is a dated 2023 planner, so I do wanna get this to you right at the beginning of the year. So this is the family organizer book, and this one is in the Harmony color colorway. I'm also going to be using this planner for this year, but I'm going to be using the Harmony Neutral colorway, so I'm going to be giving away this Harmony Colorful one. All of the details are down in the description below, but basically what this is, is it's a monthly planner that is focused on family organization, although I do think anybody can use this, and I plan on using mine for everything in my life, not just family. So you get a monthly calendar spread, and then a bunch of like monthly organizational dashboard spreads, which I just absolutely love a good dashboard. So we've got a recurring schedule, plenty of like blank space here to create your own items, this whole listing thing here, a little section that says family goals, some habit and task tracking, and then a school list, like a list that just says school, it's completely blank so you can use it as you will, dates to remember, and then there's also a lot of memory keeping in here, which I absolutely love. So you've got a section here for memories and milestones, extracurriculars, then achievements and milestones, memories, and then you've got a bunch of blank pages I think there's four blank pages in every month. And then we've got this little memory keeping section here that says the days are long, but the years are short. Favorites this month, funniest thing said, best memory and special moment I'll remember forever. And then one last memory keeping page. And then it just repeats for every month of the year. So basically you've got tons of space to plan out your fun activities in here and then also record them and memory keep about them. And you can keep track of all the fun that you've been having. So I'm gonna be giving this away. It's got this 
absolutely gorgeous Etta V cover. So in order to enter the giveaway, all you need to do is be a subscriber, like this video, and comment telling me something fun that you did this year. Again, I will keep this giveaway open for a week and then get this mailed out to the winner super, super quickly early next year. So that's it. I hope you had fun watching and maybe got some ideas for yourself. Tomorrow, Katie of the Planner Channel will be sharing her video, so don't forget to check that out. It is linked down in the description below, along with all of the other videos in the collab in case you missed any. Thank you so much to Tamara for hosting this collab and to all the channels that participated. I had so much fun participating. It's a theme here. Don't forget to enter the giveaway if you would like to win the family organizer. If you're new here, I hope you stick around. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I've got so much more exciting stuff coming in the new year, plus the last day of plan mess tomorrow. You can also check me out on Instagram and TikTok at MyCraftyPlans for even more planner fun. I hope to talk to you all soon. Bye!